Hello again. Hopefully this is going to be a short video. In response to the last video that I made on this Nano VNA, a viewer by the name of Michael D had written me and he was asking about using this thing for measuring some antennas. And at first I was thinking, yeah, there's no way, uh, you know, because there's a lot of characteristics that you would normally measure with an antenna. Actually, if you're interested in knowing more about antennas and how they work, uh, this is a pretty old book that I've had for many years. This is called the ARRL Antenna Handbook. Uh, this thing's probably from the 80s, maybe? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Third printing, 1976. Copyright, 1974. <laughs> so, yeah, quite an old book. But uh, this has a lot of good information about antenna design. Anyway, so Michael had provided me with a link to another video. I think it was put out by a person by the name of Andre Spees or something. Anyway, he had another small low-cost vector network analyzer similar to this. I think it cost a little bit more than this unit. And he was using it to analyze a small antenna similar to this one. He was trying to show how to use the network analyzer to tune the antenna. So Michael D had asked about if we could use this network analyzer to do that same kind of measurement. So what I've done here is basically replicated that antenna. So I'm going to set this thing up. Let's go ahead and fire up our software and you can see I'm scanning between 700 and 900 megahertz. Let's just change this down to 600 megahertz and you can see the SWR starts out quite high. It's about 24 to 1 and then it works its way down. It gets down to about 1.5 or so and then it looks like it starts working its way back up at about 820 megahertz. It looks like the center is somewhere around maybe 780 megahertz. Let's change the uh, start frequency to 700. So if we uh, move the cursor here down to the lowest point, see the frequency is roughly 756 megahertz. So I can store a couple of reference samples. That's what this MS1, MS2 is for. Let's just go ahead and we'll select MS1. And you can see if I place my fingers on the stub. What I'm going to do now is just take our nippers and I'll cut a little bit off the antenna. Uh, remove maybe a quarter of an inch and you can see how that slid the frequency over uh, it's now looks like at about 820 megahertz we can go up a little bit higher take another chunk off on an eighth and let's see that's taking us now to about 846 megahertz what I can do is just select MS2 and now we have a second reference stored let's just snip a little bit more off of this and you can see we're at about 856 one of the things that I should mention uh, you can see the SWR is about 1.6 1 1.7 to 1 basically you can see I have these ground radials coming out perpendicular to the stub essentially that causes a pretty big mismatch in the impedance of the antenna if you read that book, you'll see that that works out, I think, to, I don't know, like 40 ohms or something. Anyway, the idea is that you bend these down at like a 45 degree angle. And that should improve the matching. So let's just see if we can do that without breaking anything. Again, I'm just going to bend them down at about 45 degrees. And let's just see what kind of effect that has. And there you go. Look at that. So we're now at, looks like 1.01 1 .01 to 1. Looks like that's changed our frequency a little bit. We're now at about uh, 848 megahertz, it looks like. You know, again, if we wanted to increase that a little bit, Let's just take a little bit off of the stub, and where are we at now? Well, it's getting pretty close, so it's about uh, 858 with an SWR of 1.03, 1.02. Let me take one more shot at it here. And wow, right there you go, 868 megahertz with a SWR of about... 1.03 to 1. Let's just take a note of that so it's 
1.023 to 1 and the frequency again is 868.0 megahertz so this will be our reference let's go ahead and we'll disconnect this antenna so I also made this one you can see I've already bent the ground radials again at roughly 45 degrees I think this is about three and a half inches so it's going to start out at a little bit higher frequency again if you read that ARRL book that I mentioned they talk in there about the number of ground radials basically uh, four really doesn't do you a lot of good so let's just go ahead and we'll hook this antenna up and again I'll just clamp it and we'll go ahead and torque it Uh, the SWR looks like 1.02 with a center frequency of about 870 megahertz. Let me trim it just a little bit more off of it. I like to get it closer to about 890 or so. Now ah, we're making some headway. So about 888. So as long as I stay somewhat away from it, you can see it's definitely fairly sharp at 890 megahertz or so. It looks like the SWR is pretty close to 1.01. Again, if I move my hand up near this thing, look at how that affects it. This isn't really an optimum setup. Of course, we've got the PC, the metallic desk. I've got the simulator sitting behind it. All this metal, uh, that's all going to play into how this antenna responds. Uh, really what we want to do is get this thing mounted up in the air away from anything. Right, it's calibrated so you'll notice that it's not a nice dot on the screen and that's because the entire calibration is actually done in lab view. Next we'll go ahead and attach our antenna. Unfortunately with the new version of lab view and when I say new I mean when I changed up to 2011 so quite a few years ago actually uh, they stopped supporting my Ethernet GPIB controllers I started porting some of my software over to actually use the Ethernet calls and I talked directly to those controllers. Unfortunately I have not ported the software for this yet so, so I'm actually running the software under a virtual window and it doesn't look like the Microsoft screen capture system wants to work with it. Unfortunately I can't show you how the antennas compare on this network analyzer so hopefully that gives you enough information to know if this is going to work for you as far as looking at your antennas. You know, to be honest, at $50, I don't really see it as a big problem anyway. Uh, that's quite cheap for a network analyzer. And, you know, to be honest, so far I've been pretty pleased with what this thing can do. Not that I'm going to start using this to replace the old HP. I'm just impressed with what they've done as far as the performance of this in such a small device and then selling it for such a low cost. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hope you found it helpful. Later.